Welcome to Larry's Library. Today we're looking at All New Wolverine on the Bus by Tom Taylor. Now, this one has been hyped by everybody, uh, not the least of which is my daughter Kristen, and Omnidog, and lots of other folk. This is a Marvel on the Bus. It's 862 pages. It's got a cover price of $100. And as of the time of this shooting, it is out of stock at InStockTrades.com. I don't think Cheap Graphic Novels has it either. Uh, showed low stock at Amazon when I looked. So, now I think this is not out of print. I think it's just out of stock. So this could be restocked in the future, I think. So the creators on this is Tom Taylor, very celebrated, popular writer. Uh, the art, on the other hand, <laughs> there is an army of artists here. A very long list. I'm not even going to try to name them all. Uh, I will put a graphic up here. That's the list. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I counted six artists listed on the cover, and I counted a total of nine listed in the credits. So, shame on you, Marvel. If you can put six names on the cover and on the spine, you can certainly put nine. You know, not like you don't have room. Yeah. So, shame on Marvel for that. Uh, I don't like having this many artists on a, on a book, but if you're going to, you need to credit them. So, that's how I feel about that one. Before I get into the contents, I want to mention another word on the art. 37 issues collected here, and of that 37, four issues have art by Ramon Rosanas, and he is fantastic. And they only used him four times, and that is a crime. Uh, six issues have art by Juan Cabal, and he is also excellent. So, you got in my view, you have 10 issues by some top-notch phenomenal artists and another 27, well, by, let's just say other artists. <laughs> Not their caliber, but there you go. So the contents on this one. This collects all-new Wolverine 1 through 35, Annual 1, uh, Generations Wolverine and all-new Wolverine Special. Contains that one too. Before I talk about all the good stuff in this book, and there's plenty to talk about. I want to talk about the bad. Let's just get that out of the way right now. And the worst part of it for me was this army of... How can I be charitable? An army of exceedingly average artists plagued this book. And it's not even consistent art either. They, you know, Like I said, nine artists used here across 37 issues. So it's a roller coaster ride of, well... Mostly mediocrity, I'm afraid. So yeah, I, I was not thrilled with the art, and with the exception of Ramon Rosanas and Juan Cabal, who were excellent. And that's the scans I'm going to feature in this video, are the two artists that I really loved. I'm not even going to uh, show you the other stuff, but that's the ones I love. Now, the other bad part for me was a couple of really goofy, silly things related to firearms. You know, and I, I'm not, I'm going to try not to dwell on this and, and bore you guys, you know. Guy knows a little bit about guns in real life. He wants to give you a ballistics uh, treatise, so sorry. But I can't help it. I have to mention it. Uh, at least two times, maybe more than that, but at least twice I noted while reading this. Uh, Tom Taylor seems to think that you can employ deadly force, a gun, in a non-lethal way. This is, this is something, this is a myth that's been perpetuated by television and film for longer than I've been alive. Fortunately, TV and film have matured somewhat and uh, generally are getting more realistic in their depiction of that. So it's less, that happens less and less in, in TV and movies. So I guess it's no wonder that it's still happening in comic books, but <laughs> You know, you, you can't say, all right, men, let's go in. Remember, non-lethal shots only. And they all have standard firearms. Standard firearms are lethal weapons. Uh, trained professionals with guns, law enforcement, uh, soldiers, etc. They are never told and they are never instructed to take non-lethal shots because there's no such thing as a non-lethal shot. It just... If you're going to have a non-lethal shot, you're going to use non-lethal weaponry. You're going to you're going to use stun guns. You're going to use uh, clubs, impact weapons, uh, beanbag, 
shooters up, that sort of thing. You're not going to use a gun gun and say non-lethal shots because what is a non-lethal shot? You know, you got a moving target. You're trying to, oh, well, shoot him in the leg. That's what the old cowboy shows you. Just, just shoot him in the leg. Well, there's a femoral artery in the leg. If you shoot someone in the leg, uh, he could bleed out pretty quick. You say, well, just shoot him in the arm. You got a moving target. You're trying to shoot him in the arm. You hit him here. It's not a lethal shot anymore. <laughs> uh, just trust me, professionals. Do not ever instruct someone to take a non-lethal shot with a firearm. Doesn't happen. Now, maybe if you had a Star Trek phaser, you set it for stun. Okay. But I'll stop at that because I know I'm boring some people to tears here. The other thing that happens with guns in here is the same thing I've criticized other artists for. It's just crazy. Here, They show, well, I'll show you the graphic here. They hold up the, the loaded round, the cartridge, the bullet in the case. They show you the, the round. Later in the story, mild spoiler, but you sh they shoot this round into a doom bot. And then they show you inside the doom bot, and it turns out the wasp is riding inside the bullet. The bullet is like a little uh, ship, in a sense, for her to ride in. And that's fantastical and crazy, but I, I can imagine it. But here's what they show. You see the problem here? The case is still attached to the bullet. That's not how bullets work. The case and the bullet don't fly through the air together. The case is thrown aside. The bullet keeps going. <laughs> I mean, come on. If you're going to draw a bullet, could you do just do a tiny bit of research? Just a little bit? And Tom Taylor, dude, you've written tons and tons of things. You're a playwright. You've written for television and film. You've, you've won all these awards. And you think that people are, can take non-lethal shots with a firearm. <laughs> All right. So that's the end of my bad, really. The uh, very inconsistent and mostly mediocre art and some goofy stuff with guns. But otherwise, this is mostly a delight for me. And so now I'm going to talk about the good. Uh, Long-time fans of classic Wolverine and classic X-23, for that matter, are going to be really happy to see the return of a bunch of Really cool characters. Among them are uh, Rough House, Lady Deathstrike, and Kimura. Kimura, the big bad from the original X-23 miniseries, her origin. And it's really satisfying how Tom Taylor takes and, you know, sews all that up in a nice bow and takes care of those dangling plot lines that have been dangling for many years. So kudos to him for that. Very well done. Enjoyed it immensely. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to like here. Uh, I, I really wish there was more consistent art and better art. I wish they had used uh, uh, Ramon and uh, Juan Cabal. I wish they had used those two guys a lot more because they were killer. And, uh, you know, the first half of the book, I don't think there's really much art that did much for me. In. And uh, I was thinking, man, this thing's a dog. This is a dog. I mean, I love some of these characters, but and the story's good, but man, this art is hard to get through. But it started getting a lot better, and I'm happy to report that this book ended with the better art. You know, the last three issues, I think, are by um, Ramon Rosanas, and it is fantastic. And so I, it ended very much on a happy note. And I really like that. I also really liked the redesigned costume. Uh, for Laura, for Wolverine, where it has the jacket that fits over the sort of black and gray outfit. Really like that one. Very well designed costume. I did not like her in the yellow and blue. I didn't like the original Wolverine in the yellow and blue, and I don't like her in it any better. I just never liked the yellow and blue costume. But man, that redesign costume with the jacket, beautiful. Really like that. I don't know if the character going forward past here uh, rocks that cool outfit or a different one. I I do not uh, tend to buy many current uh, Marvel superhero comics, so I don't know about that. I hope they uh, chose that one because that's the best one in my opinion. Really nice looking. Liked it a lot. Uh, but probably the best thing about this whole omnibus and the whole thing that just brings a smile to your face every time you see her is the introduction of the new character, uh, Laura's sister Gabby, aka Honey Badger. She is a delight 
She's fantastic. She's well written. She's funny. She's just delightful. And you you will fall in love with this little girl as soon as you see her. You know, and as soon as you hear her with the, the quips and everything and the uh, the ingenious thing they do with her claws. I mean, the whole thing is great. Uh, yeah, the character of Gabby makes this book. If Honey Badger wasn't in it, uh, I would be like, Christian, I appreciate you giving me this book, but here, you can have it back. That's how, that's how strongly I feel about Honey Badger. She makes the book. So, love that. So yeah, uh, overall, I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. If the art had been more consistent, more consistently good, in my view, it would have been an easy 9. But as it stands, it's an 8. It's a solid 8, but it is an 8, and it's staying in the library. So that is my review of uh, Tom Taylor's All New Wolverine. Hope you like that. And let me know what you, if you've read this, let me know what you thought about it down in the um, comments. And we'll talk about it. And I will see you next week, if not sooner. Thanks for watching.